This video is brought to you by Incogni. There are a lot of different paths you can take to get to a net zero home. Everything from passive homes to earth ships to modular and factory built houses. You can retrofit an existing building or you can build a new one. Now all of the options can make your head spin and there are pros and cons to each of them. And in my case, I'm building a new factory built net zero home, which has been in the planning stages <laughs> for a very long time at this point, but it's scheduled to start construction very soon. I thought I'd be interested to share what I'm doing and why my wife and I chose the path that we did. So let's see how we came to our decision and if I have any regrets so far. Before I get into exactly what I'm doing for my new house, there's a little context I think is very important here. And one of the reasons I named my channel Undecided was because I have a lot of different interests and I'm very curious and like to learn new things and I try to keep an open mind. And it goes back to when I was a freshman in college and hadn't declared a major yet. At my college, if someone asked you what your major was, you'd answer, I'm undecided. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you may have noticed that I go through waves of topics. Starting a couple of years ago, I began publishing videos on different net zero and sustainable home building techniques. That was me following different threads that I found interesting and concepts many of you were sharing with me. As I learned and shared what I was finding, I got motivated to do some of those building techniques on my own home. Now, I see two main motivations for wanting a super energy efficient home. One of them shouldn't be surprising if you're concerned about the environment. In the US in 2020, carbon emissions from the residential sector equated to about 6.1% of total greenhouse gas emissions. The European Union and the UK's residential sector had a greater share compared to the US at about 12%. Although the shares don't look that relevant compared to the emissions from other sectors, the amount of CO2 emitted by both regions went above 360 million metric tons. And the other big motivator for high efficiency homes is saving energy and ultimately <laughs> money, at least in the long run. Now, these reasons aren't mutually exclusive, and you most likely have one or both of those motivations if you're considering going net zero. For me, I'm interested in both of those points, and I want to be financially responsible in going net zero. Now, of all the concepts I've covered, like retrofits, passive house standards, earth ships, and modular and factory built homes, there are two that jumped out at me when I was starting to think about a new home. That's passive house and factory built homes. And just for a quick recap, comparing a passive house to a standard built home, the passive house can save up to 90% of the energy used for heating and cooling without cutting back on comfort. You can check out my passive house video if you want to get all the details, but in short, there are very specific and rigorous benchmarks that you have to hit in space heating, electricity consumption, air tightness, and more. Now, for instance, on air tightness, you can't exceed 0.6 air changes per hour at 50 pascals of pressure. For a point of comparison, a typical house might have three to six air changes per hour. Now, while I'm interested in passive houses, I wasn't completely on board with all the hoops that you have to jump through for official certification. The primary advantage of certification is strict quality control. The first and most crucial step to getting this accreditation is finding a competent, certified passive house designer or consultant and incorporating them into the process as early in the design as you can. Then with the help of your contractor, you'll decide on which certification you want to get. In the US, for example, there's two certification bodies, the Passive House Institute and the Passive House Institute US. It's, it's not confusing at all. Basically, it's two groups that disagree on the right way to build a passive house. In general, one isn't necessarily easier to get than the other, but Passive House US is considered a little more adaptable than the Passive House Institute. With the certification goal defined, it's time to run a detailed digital simulation of the building's performance, which is called an energy model. It'll help to define aspects like window glazing, shading, construction type, ventilation, and more. But providing the details of heat and airflow, moisture, noise, light, you get the idea. And the model is constantly updated as the team identifies changes that are needed based on the realities of the construction site. Now, after the home is built on the final site, the construction will be subjected to a blower door air tightness test, which uses a fan to pressurize and depressurize the building while sensors are used to measure the quantity of the air leakage through the house's envelope. Now, if your home does well in the test, there are documents to be submitted to get your house certified. I'm not against any of that, but this is where going the modular or factory built route comes in. Before I get to why I went the modular approach, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Incogni. It wasn't that long ago that I signed up for a newsletter from a company I'm not going to name the name of, but after I did, I saw a major increase in the number of promotional emails I was receiving from companies I've never heard of. And that's because they sold my information to a data broker. I've had my information leaked through data breaches before, like the one from Target just a few years ago, which can end up in the same places. I'm sure you've experienced it too. Incogni can help you with this. We have the right to request that data brokers delete our information, but it takes a lot of time and effort. I signed up for Incogni, gave them the legal right to work on my behalf, and then just sat back and relaxed. You'll see updates on your account for which data brokers they've sent legal requests to and which ones have complied. It couldn't be easier. 
I've been letting Incogni stay on top of this for me for months now. If you want to take back some of the control around who has access to your personal information, give Incogni a try. The first 100 people to use the code UNDECIDED at the link below will get 20% off of Incogni. Thanks to Incogni and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now back to why I'm going the modular factory built approach. I'm sidestepping a lot of the certification craziness because I'm working with a company that's hitting on many of the passive house standards benefits, but without the need to strictly follow the standard. For me, the most important criteria was reducing thermal bridging in the structure, having ample insulation to hit extremely high R values for the walls, roof, and windows, as well as the foundation, and also being airtight to control the air leakage. I'll be going through much more of this in depth on the actual construction process in a future video, but I'm working with the company Unity Homes, which is a sister company of Bensonwood Homes. They have a modular approach to their house design to reduce the amount of custom design and engineering required for each project. Basically, they've already taken care of all of the pre-planning, engineering, and modeling steps. Also, building the walls and structure in a climate-controlled factory setting speeds up construction and reduces waste. I'm still working out the details with Unity, but I should have a video coming up showing the entire process within the factory, as well as the construction on site. Now, the reason I'm not too concerned about getting official Passive House certification is because of Unity's track record and design. Their houses achieved near Passive House level results. I'm going to be doing a door blower test in the house immediately after our on-site assembly and later on in the finishing stages to make sure I'm hitting an ACH below 1, ideally 0.6 or below. And that brings me to the HVAC system I'm going to be getting installed, which will be a water furnace geothermal setup with a desuperheater to produce hot water. Now, a desuperheater basically strips away a small amount of heat from the geothermal system to produce the hot water in a very energy efficient way. Now, some of the benefits for striving for a passive home are that they have cleaner and fresher air since the air intake and exhaust are tightly controlled with an energy recovery ventilator or ERV, which my house is also going to have. It exchanges fresh outside air with still inside air and recovers the heat in the process. Okay, it's a little strange, but I'm probably the most excited about the ERV setup in my house. I suffer from pretty bad seasonal allergies, and with systems like this and extremely airtight houses, it can provide some excellent allergy relief. Okay, I'm, I may have lied. I'm actually as excited about hitting net zero as I am about indoor air quality. Net zero is when a house generates as much energy as it uses over the course of a year, which means solar panels and in my case, a battery system. I'm still hashing out the details of the system, but it will most likely be between a 15 and 18 kilowatt solar panel array with 15 to 20 kilowatt hours of battery storage. It's a little difficult trying to model our energy requirements before we're actually living in the house to see what we need, but it may be the type of thing where we add on to the existing system a year or two down the road if we're falling short of our net zero goal. And for homeowners interested in getting solar, Energy Sage is great and you should use it. I'll put a link to my Energy Sage portal below, but I'm actually working on my own complimentary project that I'll be launching very soon. Not exactly sure when yet, but it's meant to help demystify getting solar for your home and answering a lot of your questions. The goal is to pass along what I've learned over the years so that you feel confident in your decisions on getting solar and achieving your goals. Now, if you're interested in being part of the beta launch group, you can join the waitlist at the link in the description. And for longtime followers of the channel, it won't be a surprise to hear this, but I'm going to be building out a pretty extensive smart home. I have plans for smart shades and blinds to help control how much sunlight and heat comes into the house at different times of the day and year, smart controls for the HVAC system and lights, a smart electric panel, as well as a pretty extensive home network and security camera setup. I'm a big believer in smart homes and how the internet of things can benefit a home's energy efficiency. Again, I'll have more videos coming down the line on what exactly I'm doing there. But will all of this be worth it? Now, obviously the jury is still very much out on my specific build, but passive homes and energy efficient homes in general can provide a lot of value. It can vary greatly depending on where you'll be building your passive home. For example, in Salem, Oregon in 2010, a new 1,800 square foot or about 175 square meter passive house project had a building cost of $159 per square foot or about $1,711 per meter or about $300,000 in total. While the average price per square foot in the US at that time was $84 per square foot, and a single family home in Oregon at the time cost about $250,000. Even though their passive home cost about 16% more than a conventional home, the energy savings for just heating was estimated at $800 per year. Now, all of this is highly dependent on where you live and are building. It's not that different from getting solar panels in your house. In that case, you're basically prepaying for your electricity for the next 20 to 30 years. Now, while it's a little pricey up front, you've locked in your costs and the benefits will come in over time. A passive house is the same thing. I'll be paying more up front, but will benefit from the energy savings of the house over time. How much is the big question, especially because we're building at probably the worst time I could be building a house. 
the prices of building materials and labor have increased dramatically over the past couple of years. While building new was the right fit for my wife and I, it's not a requirement to get a passive or net zero home. There are also certifications for retrofitting old construction that you can try to get. Since it's not always practical to renovate old buildings to the Passive House standard, the Passive House Institute created Enterfit, which performs an analysis of Passive House components for retrofits. Just like a brand new passive home, a retrofit house offers high energy efficiency, thermal comfort, and healthy air circulation. In addition, older buildings offer more possibilities and gains for energy savings and corresponding reductions in CO2 because they use more energy than a typical new build. Some Enterfit reports show a 93% reduction in energy loss for retrofits. But there are also challenges in passive house refurbishment, such as conservation and external insulation issues, as well as space limitations for both internal insulation and ventilation systems that have to be added. You don't always know what you're going to find in a home retrofit until construction starts, so costs can easily balloon. It's one of the reasons we opted to build new instead. However, a good friend of mine is going to be doing a retrofit approach on his house. It's going to be fun to see how both of our projects compare as we progress. And if you haven't seen what Ricky Roy is up to on the 2-Bit Da Vinci YouTube channel, here's a quick rundown of what he's doing. Hey Matt, what's up on the side of viewers? I'm Ricky with 2-Bit Da Vinci, and like Matt, I'm also working on a net zero house. But unlike Matt, I've decided to retrofit an older house. And the main reason for this is because where we live, there weren't that many open available lots. And for school districts and stuff, we were kind of forced having young kids to pick a place around here. So this is the best that we came up with. Now we're gonna have some challenges that Matt will not. For example, the house is very poorly insulated. So we'll have to rip out all the drywall, get behind the studs and check out the piping, the plumbing, electrical, and definitely insulate the house better. Being in San Diego, most homes back in that era, just weren't insulated very well. The weather here is not as bad as Matt has to face, and so as a result, they kind of skimped out on that. Another problem is our roof needs to be replaced in the next three to five years, and so as a result, we can't put solar panels on there. Instead, we're gonna go with a ground mount system off in the corner, so we'll make videos about that. But the big difference, I think, between the two of us is gonna be logistics, because we're gonna have to plan when to do these projects and find a way to do it without losing our minds because we're gonna be living here while we do it. Matt and I will also be covering some of the same technologies like geothermal, HVAC systems, for example. And for him, he'll know exactly where it'll be in place. And for us, we'll have to figure out where to do it and what to do about it. So depending on what kind of a viewer you are and what kind of house you have, you'll probably learn a lot from both of us. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned for both channels and we'll have a ton of content coming in the near term. I'm pretty excited to see how his house turns out. Be sure to follow both of our projects because it should be a fun comparison. So do I have any regrets so far? <laughs> Only one, the timing. My wife and I are building our dream home and are settling in for the long term, which is why we're willing to go a little above and beyond on the upfront costs for the long-term benefits. This house should be low maintenance, low operational costs, and be more comfortable and healthy than any other house we've ever lived in. But again, <laughs> the timing. Between the pandemic and inflationary pricing, its jack costs up much higher than we originally expected. But those costs are across the board no matter what you're doing right now. So should we have waited? I don't think so. If anything, we probably should have started the project sooner than we actually did. That's my big regret. But I'm really excited to see how it turns out and to share it with all of you. So what do you think? Are you still undecided? Would you want to build a new or retrofit home? Jump into the comments and let me know. And be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where I'll be discussing some of your feedback. And don't forget to check out Incogni if you want to get back some of the control of your privacy. The link's also in the description. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones I've linked to over here. And thanks to all my patrons for your continued support. And welcome to new producer, Shab Kumar. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.